I'm Andy from Nature's Grow Farm and you are watching my channel, Regenerative Homesteading. Now I do have a regenerative farm in southwestern Pennsylvania and our farm is mostly known for pasture raised chicken. And during the season, we process chickens right here on the farm every single week. And in just a few weeks, we're gonna start processing our own chickens for this season. And at that point, I will bring you a video showing you how we take the chickens from pasture to freezer ready. But before we get there, it's important that you know kind of an overview of the process and the equipment needed to process your chickens. So I'm going to go over some of the equipment that we use here, as well as some other recommended equipment, depending on the scale of your operation. Down in the description of this video, I have a link to all the equipment that I use now and what I've used in the past. And there's different recommendations there, depending on the scale of your operation whether you're a small homesteader or you're running a farm. So just a quick high level overview of the steps. It goes kill, scald, pluck, eviscerate, chill. And I'm gonna go over our setup here and the equipment used to get through all those steps. So starting over here, we have our Featherman kill cones. And these are the cones that will be used to bleed out the chickens. Um, whenever you put your chickens in, you put them in upside down. Whenever you put a chicken upside down, they actually go into a very calm, relaxed state their heart rate slows down and they get very relaxed. So these kill cones help achieve that relaxed state. And because the chickens are calm, they release less hormones into the meat, thus making a better final product. So this kill cone stand here is from Featherman. Um, this is not the one I started with. This has eight cones on here and it can spin. Typically our process with this is we put four chickens in, you cut the carotid artery, let them bleed out, and then you'll start four more and then go back to your first four, scald them, pluck them, and then come back, put four more in, cut the carotid artery, let them bleed out, and go back to the second group of four, scald, pluck, and so on. On a smaller scale, you don't need to have something quite this big. I actually started out with some other kill cones, and I started out with three of them, and built a, and built a stand. Uh, basically what I did was I had a wooden pallet on the bottom, put two two by fours coming up the sides, and a cross section and then I put some braces in there to brace it. Along the top cross section is where I nailed in kill cones similar to these. I just nailed them into the wood and I had three of them there. So we did three birds at a time. Eventually we upgraded that and on the opposite side we put two more kill cones so we could do five at a time. So if you're just a smaller homesteader you probably don't need to go this route. You can do something like I did where I custom built a stand and mounted some kill cones. Now I recommend either these Featherman cones or cones from called Wright Farm that you can get on Amazon. Um, I have a link down in the description of this video. But I recommend one of those two cones. Reason why is these cones are a lot deeper than others. I've tried some other cones before and they weren't as deep as these. So whenever you have your chickens in there, during the bleed out process, they will shake a lot. Sometimes so much that they bounce right out. So because these are so deep, they don't come flopping out of the cone. It's too deep for them. If you have this stand, it does collect the blood down below, um, but it's good if you put a little bit of water down there so that the blood doesn't actually stick and it makes cleanup a lot easier. If you are ma making your own stand, what we did was we just put five gallon buckets down below and just let the blood drip into those buckets. You can then compost that blood if you want. So next up, we have our scalder. Um, after the chickens are done bleeding out, they will go into a scald. Now the scalder is basically used to loosen the feathers. Um, basically what this is, is really hot water. It's between, you want between 145 to 160 degree water. Um, usually anywhere in there is pretty good. Um, this one here is a Featherman, again, link in the description. But this one's really nice because it does have a thermostat on here, runs off of propane, and it will automatically heat your water up and it'll regulate the temperature of the water so that you always have hot water it's not cooling down or heating up too much. Now this is more so for farms or if you have a very large homestead, this will be good for you. If you have a small homestead, this may be nice, but you can get away with something a little more basic. When we first started processing our own chickens here on farm, we just used a turkey fryer. There's a turkey fryer that I linked to in the description of this video. It is big enough to scald your own chickens. Also, you can put Dawn dish detergent. Um, use original Dawn, make sure it doesn't have any other harsh chemicals in there. That'll help penetrate the oils and scald your birds a little better. When you're scalding, you can lift the birds out and give them a quick test. If you pull the wing feathers out, they should come out nice and easy. If you have to like really tug on them, they need more time. But after they're done scalding, we can then move on to the plucker. So again, this is also made by Featherman. This is a Featherman Pro plucker. Essentially the way this works is when you throw your chickens in here, it spins them around 
and these rubber fingers will actually grab and pull the feathers. A good 30 to 40 seconds is in here is fine and it usually gets all the feathers off. Now again, if you are a small homesteader, you can do what we did when we started out. We used a yard bird plucker. It's very affordable. You can find it on Amazon. There is a link down in the description of this video for it. But I would highly recommend some sort of plucker either like this or the yard bird. Now, if you're only doing a couple birds at a time, there is a drill attachment you can do that has rubber fingers on it. You just attach to a drill, it spins, and you just run it over your chicken after you scald it, and it'll pull all the feathers off. That's great if you're just doing a handful of birds. But I would say if you're doing anything more than 10 birds in a day, get a yard bird plucker or this one here. They both work great. So after you're done plucking, you will then go to evisceration. In a few weeks, I'll actually make a video on how to eviscerate your chicken, as well as this entire process step by step. Whenever I eviscerate, I use Victorinox knives. Again, down in the description of this video, I have a link to those knives as well. We use a boning knife for the kill and evisceration and a breaking knife for evisceration and parting out. But Victorinox knives are really good and I highly recommend them. Now while you're eviscerating, you'll also want a gut bucket. This is for all the entrails or any unused organs that you aren't gonna keep. Basically what we did was we got a five gallon bucket. You drill holes on the side and maybe a couple on the bottom. That way the water can leak out, but it's gonna catch all your entrails. You also want some sort of food grade bins that you can put ice in and use that for harvesting any organs. We harvest the liver, heart, gizzard, feet, and necks. So all of those are gonna need some ice to go on. So we just use bus tubs, put ice in them, and that's where the organs go once we harvest them to keep them cool. Just as long as the container you're using is food safe and big enough for what you need, it'll work. Finally, after you have your burns clean, they will go to a chill tank. Now your chill tank is literally nothing more than clean water loaded with ice and you want it below 40 degrees. The whole idea here is to rapidly chill the chicken down so that it stops bacteria growth. So once you're done eviscerating your, your chickens, they just go in this chill tank and they sit there, just keep an eye on it, make sure it stays below 40 degrees and they, they can chill for a few hours. Um, we have, in some cases, we've even left them there overnight. Just make sure it's gonna stay below 40 degrees during that time. At that point, you can take them out, drain them and package them up. Now, if you're on a small homestead, you don't need a chill tank that size. You can literally just use a cooler. Just find a nice size cooler put some water and some ice in it, and you can chill your chickens down that way. You need about 1.5 gallons per chicken that you're doing. So if you're gonna be butchering 100 chickens, you need a 150 gallon chill tank, or multiple chill tanks, or coolers, or something that equals the sum of 150 gallons. I would not recommend freezing the chickens. I say about 48 hours after processing. You can really do 24. Reason why is rigor mortis is still going through its process, and you're gonna end up with tough meat. We made that mistake, we had really tough meat, we found that to be the issue, we fixed it, and now we rest our meat and we chill it in a fridge for at least 48 hours. Again, 24 hours you should be fine, but we wait 48 hours before they hit the freezer. Depending on what kind of cuts and what you wanna make from your chicken, we, we do use a meat grinder as well, and with that meat grinder, we'll take some of the legs and grind up the dark meat to make ground meat, and we also use some of that meat to make chicken sausage which I will make a video on both of those as well this season, showing you how we make the ground meat and how we make the chicken sausage. But those will come later this season when we start processing chickens. So that's a basic overview of the equipment that we use in our setup. And like I said, in a few weeks here, we're gonna start processing for this season. So I will make videos showing you the entire process and going over details of each step. If there's something specific you would like to see in that video, let us know in the comments section below and I'll try to work whatever I can in those videos. So if you enjoyed our video, hit that like button down below and subscribe to this channel. I hope to bring you a lot more videos that can help you out, whether you're a small homesteader or if you are running a pastured poultry farm. And if you have any other questions, let us know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and until next time.